We know we've got lots of housing needs, both for students, seniors, and affordable housing, and waiting lists are atrocious. And I know people from, like this isn't just a certain group of people's problem, that housing, like the house prices are rising like crazy, people can't afford to buy, they can't afford to rent, students can't find places to stay. Um, and then there's this added element of housing shouldn't just be housing. This is where we live and spend every day, and there should be options to make it part of a, a sustainability commitment. That there should be options that you can afford a housing option that will uh, that will express your interest in in pursuing sustainability. Um, so these are just some of uh, the folks that have been uh, have been supporting the project all along. We recognize that Owen Sam has a vibrant arts community, and because of all of the amenities in the area, we really think it's a, a perfect place for this. I'm just going to introduce Bob and Saif as they come in, because we were, I was dawdling, I was dawdling, we're just doing a little intro, so we'll do, we'll do a round of introductions once you guys settle, because um, you guys know a bit about the project. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is just a smattering of the, the initial um, outreach we've had with local and the investment community um, partnerships, the Beach Community Energy Cooperative up in the top corner, for those of you that are hearing that word for the first time, is where the initial spark of this project in Wonsam came from. Uh, Bob, the, uh, one of the fellows who just walked in there with the blue shirt, is um, our, our friend from the Beach Community Energy Cooperative who sort of brought this idea to one sound and said, hey, do you guys think there's interest for this here? So he's definitely part of sowing that first seed in the community. Um, and then there's all sorts of um, sort of governance visions for how this project would come together based on cooperative models. There's the idea of the, the land trust that would make sure that the property purchased by the Glassworks Cooperative um, Basically, the community owned it, and we would pull it out of speculation for the rest of eternity. That we're not, you know, it's, this isn't a developer purchasing land and then reselling the parcels, and then we've done absolutely nothing to stall the affordability issue. Um, and so we recognize whatever specific shape the project takes, it's going to go through phasing. That you know, it'll start. Um, likely with the greatest need for rental housing, and then there's other elements that can be added to it, including any of the, the uh, retail or multi-use space, um, envisioning some co-working spaces for um, all the people that work from home or like are still teaching or um, working on projects as they retire or on the side that we've sort of envisioned shared resource spaces. Um, for this to um, to accommodate this within the communities. So perhaps part of the affordability model is that the individual units are modest and they have exactly what we need and then those extra spare bedrooms and storage and workshops and dining rooms are actually more of like larger, very uh, functional common spaces um, so that we have these great shared resources and then the private units are maybe a little bit more geared to everyday needs. So that's sort of the part of the vision of the affordability, how to get this same sort of luxury of uses in a, in a more affordable context. Um, so over the last couple of years, we've had a whole series of gatherings um, from our first uh, shared AGM with the Beach Community Energy Cooperative just over a year ago to a series of workshops on cooperative models, a design, uh, design process looking at some of the potential sites, um, to a workshop at the college, at Georgian College, with students talking about housing. We did a series last summer of site tours of um, different, uh, different sustainable homes and construction materials and models. And we've ha created some potential partnerships with a couple interesting people. So one is Tapestry Community Capital, who's a group out of Toronto that started Windshare, who now, what they do is they administer community bond raising. So if there's people within your local community or within the same area of interest that want to invest their money, but not on the stock market or in Bombardier or wherever their money ends up, but in something that they believe in and they care about, 
that they will administer that kind of fundraising. So, you know, friends, family, neighbors, community members can invest, you know, a chunk of their retirement funds or whatever directly in a project like Glassworks. So this is a group that is super keen and excited about this project and when we get to that stage that we're ready, is willing to jump in and help with that stage of the, um, of the fundraising for the project. Um, of course, there's gonna be like many layers of fundraising for a project of this scale. There'll be some conventional funding. We're gonna start, have to start with some, uh, uh, some grant writing to get through the pre-development stage and get, you know, project coordinator to keep the ball rolling. Um, but this is a very interesting and very essential element for bringing community members on board with an opportunity to invest in this kind of project. Uh, we've also been speaking with New Commons Developments, who, um, what they do is they're, as they say, partners in building community, and they help interesting uh, affordable housing projects like this get through that uh, pre-development phase. So they provide sort of funding before conventional funders would, once the project is ready to roll. So just giving you kind of a little overview of some of the interesting resources that we've found over this last year that, you know, once we're ready and at that stage, all these pieces sort of start to come into play at the same time to help get through the financing of this project. Um, I just threw that up there to say that we have officially incorporated, we've got our, our bank account, and um, what this is, I'm sorry, it's very tiny, but I'll explain it to you. This is from the McKemmett and, Mc, and McDermott architects that I was mentioning, who are the co-housing um, design experts um, out of the States. This is their roadmap of the process, of the process of going through from, hey, wouldn't this be amazing in our community, to getting it built. And basically, I'll sneak up a little here, but it starts with the idea, developing your working structure and committees, um, going through the group process skills development, which is probably the stage that we're at right now, just in the top right corner. And then it gets into like assessing the financial capability, choosing the site. Anyways, I can share this with you guys all afterwards, but I just kind of wanted to have it up as a map to let you know that there, there is a clear roadmap for this kind of process. And we're, you know, probably a sixth of the way through but we're on the map. Um, I'll show you quickly a couple of sites that are sort of at the top of our mind for consideration right now, just so you can all sort of picture um, where we're going with this. So one is the Russell Brothers boat site, which is just past the Coliseum on the east shore, um, heading, out, heading north out of town. Um, it's a beautiful site, it's right on the water, it's fully serviced and has the, the rail trail, goes right by it, and it's like right on level with downtown. So it's a little bit out of town, but also definitely cyclable um, and walkable for people like Graham, who's out there and back every day. <laughs> and the bus stops right there. And the bus goes right by as well. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Um, Tuffler Creek was one of the other uh, greenfield sites we were looking at. so. I sort of skipped over the details, but the Russell Boat site would require some site remediation. It had been a boat construction site, so it would require some cleanup. There's costs associated with that. This one here is one of the green field sites, which means it's never been anything but forest and then agriculture. So the soil is clean and lovely. It's got a creek running through it. And this is just um, one concession um, east of town, just before, um, the, the road that goes out to the compost site. Does that situate it for everybody? So basically just east of the mall, heading towards Meaford, just at the top of the hill there. So it's actually coming in the back way, totally walkable to the grocery stores and all the amenities up by the mall there. A Little bit of a trek to downtown, but it does connect with the rail trail. That's like a nice smooth and flat level, um, level cycle into town. And then, what is just coming up on the market and has sparked some interest that if uh, for people that are interested in helping us take a next step with this project, the Bayview School site, which has been closed for a year or so, has just come up on the market and June 3rd offers are due. And we 
could potentially be in a position to at least put a bid in and see what happens. Um, so it's like just right at the top of the 6th street.